Our next guest believes that trend will likely continue into 2024. Let's bring in Nadja Dreff, Senior Vice President for North American Insurance Ratings at Morningstar DBS. Nadja, thanks a lot uh, for joining us. There's been a lot of focus on the Canadian banks and uh, the bank's exposure to commercial real estate, which would include office real estate, which remains a troubled sector of the Canadian and, and, and North American real estate markets. How about uh, the Life Coast? You've done some interesting work on the Life Coast and their exposure. Well, exactly. So banks are not the only ones feeling the pain from this deteriorating commercial real estate market. We have uh, done some research looking specifically at the big four life insurers, and what we wanted to do, first of all, is describe for our investors, what are those commercial real estate exposures? And for the big four life insurance companies, they primarily consist of mortgages that are backed by commercial real estate. And of course, they also have substantial amount of direct investment in commercial real estate properties. Um, next, we also uh, focused uh, really on the office real estate because that's where we've seen the most deterioration. And um, there are several reasons why we're focusing on office real estate and why that is the market under the most stress. Uh, obvious one is the higher interest rates, but we've also seen very persisting work from home trends that are decreasing demand for office space and also decreasing occupancy rates. There are other kind of supporting factors moving us in that direction, uh, digitization, as well as um, AI developments, which all point to lower demand for labor and therefore office space. In the case of the banks, I think investors would be worried about loan defaults uh, on the part of big uh, commercial real estate entities. Is that the type of worry that may exist at the, at, at the, uh, for investors in the life codes, or is it a case of accounting for, for real estate values? Uh, like the life codes are somewhat notorious for being required to account for their assets in ways that can be very complicated. Well, exactly. And that was a, a big uh, question for us as well, to see how has the current uh, commercial real estate deterioration affected their earnings thus far for 2023. So we looked at those numbers and uh, not surprisingly, um, the, the market stress and decreased valuation of CRE properties has impacted their 2023 earnings. And um, there, like I said, there's two components. And so the, the, the larger negative component so far has been from the direct holdings of investment properties, in particular office real estate. But they also uh, offer loans and mortgages, just like banks do. And so that's where we could also potentially see more deterioration, more write downs uh, throughout the year, if those loans are not performing as expected. As interest rates have gone up, Canadian investors have moved money out of the banks into the uh, life insurers, which really benefit, of course, from rising interest rates. That probably explains a lot of the move. Um, if that turns around, if interest rates start to get cut in Canada and the banks' loan losses have, have peaked, is this a concern, uh, a double concern, given the real estate exposure as well as potential for valuations to be heard from dropping interest rates? Uh, I, I wouldn't call it a double exposure because, as you know, life insurance companies have a lot of investments and their business in life insurance, so so they are substantially different from from the banking business. Um, higher interest rates that we're observing now are benefiting the business model of life insurers, but of course there are exposures such as to the real estate in which it hurts their earnings and it does show up in their financial results. So if we were to see um, a decline in interest rates, that obviously uh, would uh, bring up these valuations back up and those negative impacts uh, that we talk about in our research will be reversed. Um, so, so that would be a positive. But on the other hand, there is the entire rest of the life insurance business model and that would mean lower crediting rates, maybe less demand for their products. Uh, the, the kind of bolstering that they've seen from high interest rates would somewhat be muted then. 
which, <coughs> excuse me, which of the big four Canadian life goals are most exposed to commercial real estate? And, and secondly, in any, in any, uh, <coughs> are any of the companies at risk of having their capital ratios significantly depressed uh, by their exposure to commercial real estate? So the good news is that we certainly believe that none of this commercial real estate deterioration and particularly the vulnerabilities in the office space that we think we're going to see for the rest of the year, none of those will affect their capital. So um, so, so that's certainly a piece of positive news. Um, in terms of their exposures, uh, so we sort of add up those mortgages, we add up the investment properties, there are other smaller interests in commercial real estate in terms of the invested assets. And we find that their exposures range between seven and 18%. But when we just focus on office real estate, that number is much, much more contained. It's much smaller. It's something like um, 3% or slightly more uh, arising from, from both uh, segments of their exposure.